associate service agreement, Mr. Ty. Yes, sir. Um, earlier, earlier this year, um, the uh, commission approved us to submit an application for continuing the funding for the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the Juvenile Justice Incentive Grant. Um, we were awarded funding um, for that this year, and so this is the um, the agreement to basically continue uh, using evidence-based associates, which is the the uh, company that we use to help administer the grant and conduct the conduct the uh, counseling and, and the administration of the program last year so we, we would like to continue using them and uh, this is just the service agreement um, that outlines our scope of services the the, um, the cost and earlier this morning I did hand out the um, just as a matter of formality the as part of the agreement we also have to include the uh, immigration um, and compliance documents so that's what that's the reason I handed that out earlier, but uh, be glad to answer any questions you might have about this agreement. Any questions for Mr. Todd? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to know: Were they using this, the same uh, contractors as they uh, yes. did last year? I, I, to my understanding, um, the notification for the, I guess the, uh, just uh, having the class or just the presentation of the grant requirements took place like a day prior to. Uh, well, what we did versus this, you know a, a longer notification. Our our, con, our um, contract is specifically with evidence-based associates, and then it's up to them to to find, who, implement it with whoever whatever contractor they choose. And uh, but they did consult with us, and what we're doing is is basically we're continuing to use the same contractor that they use because um, that, that that contractor already had the staff trained, the counselors trained, the people in the area. Uh, so rather than changing and starting over from scratch, w which would have kind of put a delay, um, you know, because we already kind of have some um, some kids that that are kind of overlap, like they didn't complete their counseling, you know, under the fifth, under the 2013 funding. So we're just going to continue finish paying their remaining sessions out of out of this new new funding. Um, so for continuity's sake, and and we really had no no problems. I mean, the contractor. Um, CSI, I think, was their was their company's name. They were doing a great job. You know, we had no issues, so uh, we really, you know, we didn't. I didn't feel like the judge and I didn't feel like there was a need to to um, make EBA go out and go through the process and delay the delay the um, process by having them um, go out for funding again. I guess my, my my thing was just to try to ensure that everybody has the same type of notification and yeah. as fair as, as possible. As far as I know, they're they're wouldn't have been any notification because we weren't changing that. I mean, they didn't put out a RFP this time, La you know, that, that was done last year. Like I say, we just, we just kept the same, uh, same service provider. That's all. Any other questions? Is, uh, the judge's office submitting the invoices for reimbursement or do you review those first? Uh, no, I, I'm still handling the, okay. the paperwork side. So matter of fact, I, I gave the chairman this morning, we got some paperwork to close out the 23rd last year's grant and the, the paperwork to, to activate the award for this year's grant. So. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? All right. Here, thank you very much, Mr. Tyler. 